Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Today, I'm going to be discussing a new step that Apple has taken in their war on repair, their desire to ensure that independent repair shops like us no longer exist in a short period of time. On this channel, I have many videos going over a lot of the things that Apple does to make things more difficult for us, whether we're talking about them making chips unavailable, whether we're talking about diagnostic software that's not made available, or maybe we're just talking about 10 years of design flaws and defects that they refuse to take accountability and responsibility for until a class action lawsuit occurs that results in a user paying $3,000 for a doorstop. I have had many criticisms of Apple on this channel, and I never thought it would get to the point that we're at now. Even with the iPhone 14 and 15 and 12, you know, we've gone over a lot of the stuff with the iPhone where if you change out the camera or the battery or the screen, certain things may not work right like they did before. And you know, it wants it to have the exact same serial as the original part. And even though I greatly disagree with this, I can at least like dig down in my soul and try to you know, think the way that an Apple Insider or Mac Rumors post their things. You know, the people that think that this is all a scam, that this actually is a green screen behind me, that I don't own a repair shop, that I literally pretend I do just so that I can make money. Because yes, people have said that before. It's a pretty brain dead place out there if you go and read web forms. But I will enter their state of mind just for a moment to try to steel man their argument. And yes, there are different levels of quality for cameras, batteries, and screens and phones. And the variance in quality in these items means that you can get a vastly different experience using your phone if you have an aftermarket knockoff shitty camera. If you have a shitty aftermarket battery that when your phone goes down to 19% on a cold day just dies when you open something that's CPU intensive. Or a screen that just looks bad, the color on it's just nasty. I could understand them saying, you know what? I don't even care. I don't want it to try to detect if it's the original because that's too hard. I just want it to detect if anything's been changed so that I know that one of the core pieces of functionality in that device have been changed in a way that may compromise my quality. I disagree with it, but I can understand the argument behind that making things just not work the way they're supposed to anytime there's a tiny change. This though, this is a step too far. In my opinion, this is beyond the pale. What they have done with the new MacBooks is make it so that nobody outside of Apple can repair a sleep sensor. What is a sleep sensor? I thought you'd never ask. A sleep sensor is the thing that allows the laptop to know that it is closed. So you'll have a laptop that's open, and when you close it, back in the old days, like 25 years ago, when you closed it, there'd be this little stick that was sticking out over here. It was like a push button switch. And when the laptop closed, the push button switch would get pushed against the palm rest of the keyboard, and it would let the laptop know that it's closed. So it would go to sleep, hibernate, or turn off depending on how you configured your particular laptop. Laptop is on when it's open, off when it's closed. Pretty simple, right? Now, a few years later, they realized that having a mechanical switch do this is not the best way to do it because the mechanical switch is eventually going to wear out. It's not as reliable. So they use something now called a Hall Effect Sensor. And this has been in use at this point for about, you know, I would say 18 to 22 years, depending on the brand. A Hall Effect Sensor, for those of you who are not as technically inclined, think of it like a switch that's activated by a magnet. So you have a light switch where you flick it up, on, flick it down, and it's off. A Hall Effect Sensor is kind of like when you put the magnet in front of it, it's on. When you take the magnet away from it, it's off. So what laptop manufacturers do is they put a magnet in the screen assembly and the Hall Effect Sensor on the trackpad area, keyboard area, or the palm rest so that when the laptop is open, the magnet is far away from the sensor, so the laptop stays on. And when you close the laptop, the magnet is now close to the Hall Effect Sensor so the laptop turns off. This is really, really basic and very, very mature technology. Hall effect sensors of high quality or like a couple of cents. You can find these on mouse or a digikey for very, very cheaply, especially if you're buying in bulk. This is tried and true technology. There really have not been a lot of advancements when we're talking about Hall effect sensors that matter. But above all, we're not even talking about having a Hall effect sensor that is on a spectrum where it's like the magnet is this far away, so we register this signal. And then like, you know, where it's like the, the closer the magnet gets, the higher the signal. We're literally talking about a one or a zero. This is a binary sensor. The laptop is open, on, closed, off. One or zero. Really old technology will do this just fine. So in older MacBook laptops, if we're talking about the A1278, A1286, A1297, this was a fairly easy thing to replace. It was right by the battery indicator. You would just unscrew this little $5 part, screw into one in, and you're done. Come 2012, with the invention of the Retina MacBook Pros, the A1398s, A1502s, A1706s, A1708s, A1707s, and so on and so forth, this was now soldered onto the motherboard. But again, 
No big deal, because I can teach a 16-year-old with no soldering experience how to solder that thing on perfectly fine in under two hours, even if they have no soldering experience. Give me two hours and I'll teach a kid how to do that job just fine. Now, enter the world of the newest MacBook Pros. With the newest MacBook Pros, you can't do that anymore. They have something called an angle sensor. And the angle sensor is tied to that particular motherboard. And you need Apple's proprietary, closed source, only made available to their own Apple authorized service providers in order to replace the angle sensor. Again, we're not talking about the screen. We're not talking about the battery. We're talking about an angle sensor. You're not going to say, my laptop has worse battery life now because of this. You're not going to say, my pictures used to look really clean and crisp, but now with this aftermarket one, they look bad. You're not going to say, wow, I used to really be able to, with the color gamut on this display, be able to you know, really do good color correction in DaVinci Resolve, but now things are blurry because of this knockoff screen. It's an angle sensor. This is like a light switch. This technology is fully fully evolved to the point where even if you put the biggest knockoff piece of shit in there, nobody would ever notice a difference. But Apple thinks you may, which is why you need GSX software to pair your new angle sensor to the machine, which is software that I can't get access to. We're qualified to do data recovery for the district attorney. We have solved crimes. We have done data recoveries that have resulted in people getting arrested. Yet I am not qualified, apparently, to replace a sleep sensor in a consumer laptop. And honestly, let's say that I wasn't. Let's say that I wasn't. Let's say that I shouldn't even be making the argument that I sh am qualified to do this so I should have access to the software. Who cares? You spent $3,000 on this computer, did you not? Does that not mean that you should have access to its calibration software if that calibration software is necessary to make it work again after doing service to it? Like, you paid for it, did you not? You're not the one that made the choice that they were going to use this little angle sensor that requires you run a piece of software to calibrate it when it's done. Apple chose to do that. So Apple should make the software available to you because you're the device owner. This should be on your computer. You should not have to attach it to the internet, connect to their servers from a specific IP, enter some sort of username and password. This should be on your computer. This should be included with it on a disk or downloadable from their website for anybody that bought the product to use. This is insane. We're arguing over sleep sensors now. The cherry on top of all of this is that GSX is only made available to authorized repair centers which don't do liquid damage repair because they can't. But it's not made available to independent board level repair shops that do do board level repair. So the people who can do the repair are not allowed to have access to the software to do it. And the people who are not allowed to do these types of repairs have access to the software that would allow them to do it. Great fucking job. So what is the practical ramification of this for our business? Well, when someone comes in with this problem, we used to put on a new hall sensor because this shit's like 50 cents. And really, like, who's, who's counting 50 cents when we're talking about repairs that cost over $200? We would just put a new one on. Now, we can't put a new one on because it won't work. What we have to do is we have to rip the old one off. And we have to look at those corroded solder pads on that chip and scrape and scrape away like we're filing our nails. We scrape away with a Hacko 2032 and its T30KN tip. We scrape away with a dental pick. We scrape away with a fiberglass pen to see if we could get to any sort of little piece of metal that's still there and try to make it solderable again and add a jumper wire to it. We're looking at a flex cable, a flex cable that is less than 50 cents. I'm telling people, I'm telling technicians that get paid 30 to $50 an hour, spend an hour trying to fix this flex cable that costs 50 cents because we're not allowed to replace it. So if the pads are missing, we have to start scraping away with a dental pick and hope that we can solder a little jumper wire onto a flex cable to reattach it to a chip that was corroded that we then have to file away at to get to the metal because I can't put a new 50 cent hall sensor on that person's MacBook because if I do, it won't work. If Apple had their way, the water in your toilet wouldn't start to go down after you flushed it without using their proprietary fucking software. So what this means is that after an hour of my technician trying to repair a chip, not replace a 50 cent chip, repair the 50 cent chip. If he's not able to do it, we get to call that customer and say, hey, good news, your computer works. Bad news, it won't go to sleep if you close it. Or even worse, bad news, your computer works, 
but thinks it's sleeping even when it's open. And there's nothing I can do about it because you need access to proprietary software that you don't get with the computer that you supposedly own. We are living in a world where these people want to control every little bit of our lives and we should not let them. This is fucking clown world. Who are you protecting? Whose security or safety are you protecting? I dare somebody to make the argument that this is about security or safety. I dare somebody to say that this has anything to do with the quality of the user experience. I dare somebody to say that there is such a difference in the availability of hall sensors on the market today that when we're talking about something that is looking to do a binary yes or no, is this magnet five inches away from the computer or is this magnet touching the computer, that there is such a difference that it is worth locking everybody out of the ability to repair a hall sensor and their computer. This is insanity and it's going to spread. And I. I know it's going to happen. Queue up five minutes after this video is done. You will have some schmuck saying, you know, LOL, MacFag, you bought that, you Apple clown, iToddler, BTFO, whatever the fuck stupid shit people write into YouTube comments to seem cooler than they are. Remember a few years ago when you guys were saying, LOL, buy Samsung if you want a headphone jack. LOL, buy Samsung if you want a micro SD card slot. LOL, you should buy something else if you want a bootloader that allows you to install whatever OS you want. Oh wait, you can't do that anymore because every single one of these companies realize that they make more money when they take away your freedom and your control and your sovereignty over what you own. If you think this ends at Apple, oh, that's funny. That's funny. It doesn't end at Apple. It doesn't end with Apple or John Deere or any one of these other companies across a string of industries every single day, inching one step at a time to take away your freedom to do what you want with what you own. And here's the saddest part of it all. Here's the saddest part of it all. I know this from doing 10 and a half years of videos on YouTube. I'm going to release this video. A bunch of people are going to upvote it. A bunch of people are going to comment on it. A bunch of people are going to say, that's not right. It may even make it to the front page of Reddit. And you know what's going to happen a week or two later? Nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to care. We are driving off a cliff of our freedom. And someday, we will be fully over the cliff. It will be too late to break. It will be too late to make a turn. It will be too late to wake up. And by then, the only thing I'll be able to say is I told you so. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. Great question I thought you'd never ask. A sleep sensor is the thing that allows the laptop to know that it has been closed. So 25 years ago, this may actually be a mechanical part. So you may have something like a little pin that sticks out. Hi. I'm doing a video. What the fuck? There's a camera over there, you know. I'm 99% certain she wouldn't have done that if she, knows there was, she knew there was a camera there. What kind of idiot does that? Knowing there's, like, look to see if there's a camera before you do that. Holy shit. Oh, that's dumb. I should put that shit on e-fucked. I'm like, I'm semi-tempted to put that on e-fucked. I think I'm allowed. Like you did it in front of a, you know. Where the fuck was I? Where the fuck was I? Okay, take two.